In my last video on this topic, I talked about how most of the toxicity in the Monster Hunter community is centered around DPS. Whether you're giving it or receiving it, that's the one thing we criticize each other the most about. Are you doing enough damage? Is your set good enough? Are you playing the game the right way, meaning as fast as possible? I left you guys with a question. Is this focus on DPS above all else a positive thing or does it come with a price? And what do speedrunners have to do with all this anyway? Can't I just give them a break? After you finish watching this video, I'm confident that you'll have a greater appreciation for the true effects that speedrunners and meta chasers have on the rest of us. For every game on the planet, the meta for that game is defined by what the player base as a whole is doing to be more successful. This works because most games that develop a strong meta are player versus player, a situation where there are very well-defined rules but very little predictability, and there's a very clear record of who is winning more. The meta changes with the ebb and flow of players coming into the game, bringing their creativity and watching strategies spread through the community based on what is actually working. Sure, things change when the developers make adjustments to the game, but most of the meta comes from what actually works in real world scenarios for real people. Monster Hunter, however, is a very notable exception. The meta for Monster Hunter is not defined by what works for most people in most scenarios. The Monster Hunter meta is defined by what works for a very, very tiny subset of people in artificially created scenarios that nearly all players do not ever encounter in the game. In short, the meta comes from what speedrunners demonstrate and dictate based on their experience playing a game that the rest of us are not actually playing. Here are a few examples to illustrate what I mean by that. Speedrunners typically compete using TA rules. These rules severely limit which features of the game you can use. They don't let you use flash bombs, traps, or buddies, for example. They don't allow you to capture the monster. Sonic bombs are out, as are all barrel bombs. You're not allowed to use heroics, adrenaline, or fortify. You're not allowed to use any of the gatherable hunting helpers. Wyvern riding is severely limited. Restocking items at camp is not allowed. The official TA rules state that only the Switch versions of the game are allowed and that cheats are not. But we have a speedrunning community on PC, and while they follow most of the TA rules, they do indeed allow cheats and mods. By the way, if you think Switch is immune to this, think again. The Switch version of Rise has been working on an emulator since launch, and mods are fully supported in emulation too, as well as network play. You think that guy who posted his Switch speedrun is actually playing it on a Switch? We'll never really know, will we? So let's take a look at just a few of the cheats and mods that are used extensively for speedruns on both Switch and PC and that are generally accepted by the PC speedrun community. First, we've got hack charms that have a one in 10 million chance of you actually getting in the game. Now the player base isn't even 10 million people. So just think about that for a minute. They've got cheated augments that, again, are statistically impossible to get in-game. Here's a cheat to control where the monster loads. Here's one to ensure that it has the lowest health value. Looking for 100% success on food skills? How about automatically eating? How about automatically posting the quest? You can even skip the carve timer and return from the quest immediately. How about 60 iframes? And if all that's not enough, some speedrunners will actually commission a modder to make them a custom cheat. For example, one that modifies part break values or motion values or even the chance to proc certain skill effects. And since it's a custom made mod, only they have access to it and they can keep it secret until and unless they get caught. As you can see, this is nothing at all like the Monster Hunter game that I'm playing. It's not just a stripped down version of the game. It also includes things that aren't in the game. It includes changes to the game so extensive that it's no longer possible to legitimately state that they're playing Monster Hunter anymore. They're playing an entirely different game from the one that you and I and millions of other people play every single day. And then they have the audacity to tell us 
that the strategies that they use in this artificial scenario are also the best ones for us to use in the actual real game scenarios. When you ask them to explain how that makes any sense at all, they'll pull out some formulas and show you some numbers and tell you that damage is all that really matters. But this just isn't true, is it? When you strip away all of the variability from the game, when you strip away everything that has nothing to do with damage, then obviously damage is all that matters. But that's circular logic, isn't it? And to think, if that's not crazy enough, it actually gets worse. You see, the other part of the artificial scenario that they've created is that you, the player, are playing perfectly. Their entire premise rests on that one single assumption that you don't make mistakes, that you time everything perfectly, that your aim is 100% accurate, that you follow their script, and that as soon as you do make a mistake, you abandon the quest and use your mods to restart quickly and follow the script again from the beginning. They actually sound like those fitness influencers who claim that all we need to do is buy their supplements and training plan and we can have a body like theirs in a short time with little work. Use these armor sets, use this playstyle, and you'll be so much better in no time. And like the fitness influencers, it's all a lie. What those meatheads don't tell us is that they're using PEDs. They take drugs that reduce their body fat and increase their muscle mass. So too do the speedrunners use cheats to achieve their amazing results, as I've just outlined for you. It's no wonder they don't have to work as hard as us to achieve much better, in fact, impossibly better results. That's not to say they didn't work hard. They've spent countless hours abandoning quests and repeating the same exact script. The lie is when they say you too can achieve similar results through simply copying their set and play style. But we don't play the game the same way they do, right? We play it with all the randomness and variability still in there, the way the developers built it. And we play it with all of our flaws and foibles. We play it when we're too tired to even press the buttons properly, when we're too wired to calm the fuck down and just breathe. We play it on days when we suck and don't care that we suck. We play it with our children who ride around on Palamutes the entire quest because it's just that cool. And it's not just that we make mistakes. After all, they make mistakes too. They just deal with their mistakes differently. No, it's, it's more than that. We play it in so many different ways because we enjoy all the variety and diversity that the game offers us. We set our own personal challenges that have meaning to us. It isn't about optimizing for one single game statistic, that being the quest timer. You guys have already told me in the comments of previous videos literally hundreds of ways that you enjoy the game that have nothing to do with getting the best possible quest time. For many of us, it's simply about completing the quest at all, and not just the noobs either. Take me for example. I've already beat the game with the bow. Now, can I even finish a single quest successfully with a weapon I've never used before? That's something I'd like to find out. When we take all these factors into consideration, it becomes clear that speedrunners and those who push the meta are so out of touch with how the vast majority play this game that they just don't know how bad their advice really is for the rest of us. So we have one community setting unachievable goals and defining a meta for the game based on unrealistic scenarios. So what? Let them do their thing and we'll do ours, right? If only it were that simple. I mentioned in the first video of this series how you see nearly every conversation devolve into one about DPS. We just can't avoid it even when we try. Why is DPS and the meta so entrenched in the Monster Hunter community? If the speedrunners are off doing their own thing on their own, how do these ideas spread so rapidly and so thoroughly amongst the entire player base? The meta is a virus. Here's how it works. A small group of people make videos about how awesome they are at the game. They set an unachievable standard. People watch these videos, are very impressed by them, and internalize these unachievable standards. What that means is they begin to believe that the goals of the person in the video are actually their own goals and desires. They wanna be as good as that guy. They see so many views, so many positive fawning comments, and they come to the false conclusion that the community as a whole also shares these values with them. After all, nobody wants to feel like they're doing something wrong. We all want to get better at the game. So people start to believe that the ones making the videos with their insane clear times must simply be better at the game. People start to believe that this is how it should be done, that these are examples of the best form of gameplay possible. As a result, we see two things happen. First, we see the toxicity in the YouTube comments, in the various Monster Hunter discords, and on Red Egg Game Facts and other message boards. People who have never done a speedrun before talking about how this or that has higher DPS, 
so it's better somehow. They repeat the values that they learn from watching speedrunners and those who define the meta. This constant repetition of the same talking points over and over again in so many different contexts, in turn, makes even more people feel inadequate and makes people think that even more people in the community value clear times above all else. And so the virus spreads further. The second thing that we see is the major Monster Hunter YouTube channels creating videos that further promote the speedrunner goals. The common tropes that we see include things like, this weapon is the best, this skill is the best, this is the new meta, this breaks the meta, you should be doing this. All the big channels make videos like this, and a lot of the smaller channels copy that same formula. The irony is that the biggest Monster Hunter channels are not run by speedrunners. They're run by average players like you and me. Yet, by making videos with their hyperbolic claims and their focus on damage above all else, these channels are responsible for promoting the values and attitudes of the speedrunners and the meta chasers. Whether they realize it or not, any channel that makes videos like this is promoting values that they themselves do not necessarily have, or at least values that they don't really believe in. Yet they want us to believe in it, because the more of us who do believe that DPS is king means their videos get more views. Every video that glorifies or promotes meta builds is essentially akin to a super spreader event, transmitting the virus of the meta into the minds of thousands more people. So here we are, with the player base of millions of people, most of whom believe that there is some optimal way to play the game. A best weapon, a best build, a best playstyle, and that anyone who strays from this prescription is doing it wrong. I'm frequently told that any off-meta build is categorized as a meme build. The irony here is that, by the original definition of the word meme, when it comes to Monster Hunter, the meta is the meme. So how do we fix this? How do we cure people of this virus? How do we help other players enjoy the game the way they themselves choose to enjoy it, rather than trying to play it the way someone else has dictated for us, the way they feel some obligation to play it? If the meta is what makes you happy, by all means, enjoy it. But that's not most of you. In fact, judging by the thousands of comments on my videos regarding this topic, it's not even half of you that enjoy playing the meta. It's a minuscule percentage of you. And most of you who do play the meta, have admitted that you do it out of a sense of obligation. There was a brilliant comment in my Discord server the other day that illustrates this perfectly. A new user came in and the very first comment he made, the very first thing he felt he needed to share with everyone was this. Found your channel after watching a lot of meta YouTubers. Now I'm just discouraged and feel robbed of the game experience. I continued the conversation with him and here is his story. I've added it for clarity and brevity. He says, well, I went from watching meta YouTubers to, to completely losing motivation after discovering Ixion. I thought he was just some wacky, overdramatic guy, but Jesus Christ, is it true? I felt Rise was too overwhelming at first and decided to just see what worked from YouTubers. I've been told my weapon of choice was wrong or the skills I use are not fun or will not get you very far. So I took their suggestions and fell into the meta playstyle, pretty much doing everything they suggest instead of exploring the game. I'm in the end game now, and all I've heard is there's no good end game content. Now I feel like it's too late to learn anything else. A few people from the Discord talked with him about this for a little while, and toward the end of the conversation, he was feeling a lot better. He goes on to say, You, along with the other Discord members, have helped a lot in motivating me. Though, I find it sad that I fell into that kind of thing so easily. My main issue with following the meta is that it stifled creativity, and you don't learn the game as much. When you limit the amount of tools, players are just missing out on a lot of content. Same thing happens when they say that things are broken. People will then only use that broken build and not experience anything else and get burned out. Since then, I've been more creative and I've learned more than I would have ever learned from them. So I have a few ideas on how we can help each other enjoy this game in a way that's true to our own individual values, whether that's exploration, being creative, breaking records, or even something as simple as spending time with friends. I'm sure you guys have some good ideas too. I'm saving mine for part three. You can share your thoughts right now. I'll do my best to read every one that I possibly can.